Hello. In this video, I want to answer one of the most common questions I get asked. And I've got an example of it here from Nicholas, who was a student on the Home Mastering Masterclass course earlier this year. And he says, when working on songs with heavy drums, like loud snare, I always find myself in a place where I end up having to crush the snare drum into the limiter in order to get the song to a proper level. But then I hate the sound of the snare drum, so I back off. But then I'm not loud enough. What's the secret here? How do you deal with that? And I haven't actually heard how Nicholas got on when he tried to master this song, but when he sent me the raw mix, I took a listen and I thought, I bet I know the answer to that question. And I thought you'd be interested to see it too. So here is the song that Nicholas sent me. I'm not sure how you pronounce the band name. I think it's Por Ho Por. And the song is called Frozen Clock. And you can see it's quite a dynamic mix. It starts off quite quietly. It ends up much louder. So at the moment, I've got a bit of processing on the clip. And I'll just play you some so you can hear how it sounds. How many times you have passed You lay some same hard But it's not Hey, man, you're rising My for all that you want and then I'll play you a bit of the end section. And now let's see what happens when I boost the level up in the way that Nicholas is talking about. My for all that you want One day she'll arrive A lady with an answer The truth So this early section is working pretty well. Now let's listen to the end. And there we can hear and see the problem, which is the overall level is about right. It's right at the top end of what I would call the sweet spot. The DR measurement over here on the TT meter is getting down to about 8 dBs, which is as low as I recommend going, especially for kind of quite acoustic, natural sounding music like this. And it's starting to sound very congested and thick. And that's because there is a lot of compression going on. You may have noticed I've got a multiband compressor across the track. And if you just watch the gain reduction and the level meter on the plug-in window over here, you'll see what I mean. So we're seeing consistently four or five dBs of gain reduction in the mid-band. And you can see how far above the knee the compressor knee, the signal is. In mastering, I always think it's a good idea to have the compressors operating below or at the knee, which is the point where it changes from no compression to compression coming in. We've got a two to one ratio on this at the moment. And I'd be looking for the level of the signal to move around the knee there. If it's constantly in compression, you're very much affecting the character of the sound with the sound of the compressor. Now, when you're mixing, especially with a classic analog compressor or an emulation of it, that might well be something that you want. But in mastering, I'm looking for the processing I'm doing to be invisible as much as possible. I want the music to sound better without anybody really being able to tell why. And that, to me, is a warning sign. I'll just play you a little bit more of that so you can see what I mean. You can see how far up it's pushing beyond the compressor knee. It's, it's hardly ever going below it, to be honest. But the other thing that I hear when I listen to this track is that, for me, the EQ is not balanced. Overall, I feel it sounds quite middly. It's got a nice, warm acoustic sound to it, but I would like some more air and space in the track. I'd like more depth and richness in the bass end. So I've used some EQ to achieve that. Let's just enable that. And now I'll play you 
the end section of the song again. Now in the EQ, I've actually, you'll see here, I've put in a gain reduction of 2.75 dB. You can see I'm boosting quite a lot of the EQ. If I don't tweak that level, when I bypass the EQ, you'll hear the overall level change and that can fool our ear as to how it sounds and make it very hard to make accurate judgments. So with the EQ, I've got a reduction in gain to compensate for these gain changes and you'll hear the levels are matched. So here it is with the EQ. I'll bypass the EQ. And now let's see how that's affecting the compression that's going on. So here we are back with the, the flat EQ and you can see there's still lots of compression happening in the mid band, which is contributing to that dull, thick sound. Now I'll switch the EQ back in. And I think you can see that apart from the very loudest sections, the compressor is now operating in the mid-band around about the knee. Let's take that back and try it on a different section of the song. So overall there's still quite a lot of game reduction, but it's very much now operating around the knee. And if I flick back, switch the EQ off. There you can see how much more compression is happening all the time. And the only difference between those two is that in one of them, the EQ is balanced going into the multiband compressor, and in the other one, it's not. And as a result, with the balanced EQ, we can have the overall level 2.75 dB is lower, which means that what compression there is is distributed more evenly across the bands, and there's less of it. So overall, the EQ suits the track better, I think, when really it opens it out and gives it some clarity and depth, and you don't have to push that track so hard into the compression and limiting that's being used in the mastering process. It took me about 45 minutes to an hour to get this EQ right, the balance of the EQ with the dynamics processing. It's ended up a bit brighter than really I would have liked. There's a little bit of an imbalance in the mix in between, for me, the sound of the drums and the sound of the voices. So the voices and some of the high end of the drums, the cymbals and hi-hats and stuff, come out a little bit toppier than I would like, and there's probably not quite enough life and air in the snare sound for me. So potentially that's something that I might suggest Nicholas goes back and tweaks in the mix of this track. And I think another key thing to notice about this EQ is this dip I've got here at 250 hertz. That's taking quite a lot of thickness and weight out of the snare. And I think that's the reason why Nicholas is really hearing the snare suffer when it gets pushed too high into the limiter, as well as the overall EQ balance. There's a lot of energy and dynamic information in that frequency. And if you hit it really hard, a limiter is going to be too aggressive a way to control it. So I do have a limiter on the output of this, but it's probably only doing a dB or two of gain reduction most of the time, maybe three or four at the most. And my guess is that from the problems that Nicholas described with his original attempts to master the tune, he would have been hitting his limiter much harder than that. So as I say, uh, I'd spent about 45 minutes to an hour sorting out the sound on that track, so there isn't room to show you all of that in a video like this, um, but hopefully that gives you a better idea of the kind of decisions you have to make when you're mastering, the importance of EQ and the compromises that you sometimes have to make. And if you really want to dig into this topic, I do have a product called Home Mastering EQ, which is a set of HD videos that really dig into 
how I use EQ, what I'm listening for, what I'm looking for, the effect of the different frequency bands on a mix when you're mastering. And if you want to find out more about that, there's a link underneath the video. So I hope you found that useful and interesting. Feel free to subscribe to the YouTube channel and head over to my website, productionadvice.co.uk, where there's loads more free information like this. My name is Ian Shepherd. Thanks for listening.